It has become clear that uh, bioenergy is a racing star in the Swedish energy mix of fuel with lower impact on climate change. Today's interview is with Gustav Melin, CEO of the Swedish Bioenergy Association. Welcome, Gustav. Thank you very much. The, the best thing today is that we got yesterday the figures from the Swedish Energy Agency, which uh, shows that Sweden uh, surpassed the goal for 2020 already in 2012. So last year we had 51% renewable energy. Uh, more than half of the energy is renewable. And the 2020 goal is 50%. So that's very good. So uh, your scenarios for the future when we look at Sweden? Uh, I mean, the development will continue. We have almost uh, uh, taken away all the fossil oil in heating sector. There is still some in the industry that will be replaced in the coming years. Uh, but then uh, we have uh, done every, all, all the heating, so we are into electricity partly, and, and then the transportation sector is, is the next movement or the next big step to, or the challenge even to, to uh, handle. 1991, when we introduced the carbon dioxide tax, then, uh, then uh, oil was big in district heating. And with the tax we have uh, uh, phased out the oil. And we are able to do the same thing in the transportation sector. Biofuels will be cheaper, get cheaper than uh, using oil. So when you say biofuel, what uh, sort of uh, biofuel do you talk about? Oh, we talk about uh, uh, ethanol, uh, biodiesels and uh, biogas, but uh, I mean there are different options and, and so, so uh, I think they will have to compete with each other to uh, find out which uh, biofuel that will be the most efficient. Uh, we have both uh, ethanol from sugarcane, for example, that we import, we have ethanol from wheat, production as all, that also produce protein for father and so on in that plant. But we expect to develop advanced biofuels from cellulose from the Swedish forests. Uh, we believe that can be big. Uh, it will depend on the cost uh, and the development of the industry and how they are able to decrease costs. But we believe that it's possible to do, especially when you do energy combine with uh, pulp production, uh, pulp and paper, uh, energy, maybe use the heat and produce electricity, but also a part of the uh, energy combined then can produce biofuels. So uh, your conclusion is that uh, we in Sweden will see a decreased use of fossil fuel in the transport sec the sector in the coming years? Yeah, absolutely. But it's not only because of the biofuels, it's partly also because of electricity in, in, and hybrids uh, in the transport and also because of uh, more energy efficient uh, engines. I think uh, for the EU it would definitely be a common introduction of the carbon dioxide tax. It, mo it makes everyone move uh, a lot easier. If we look at the European view we have, uh, last year we had 11 million hectares that is set aside, that is unused. Uh, so there is a lot of land to produce uh, more food on or energy if needed. Uh, but I see that this is the uh, similar situation in every country actually globally. Uh, one problem is that uh, the yields uh, and the production in many fields are too low. Uh, Africa is still as, on an average on just uh, about one uh, ton, 1.4 tons of grain per hectare. Uh, we had um, that's the same level as Sweden uh, was in the in 1870, uh, 150 years ago, and uh, Brazil was at that level 50 years ago. But today they are around four, close to four tons per hectare, and uh, and in the Western Europe we are about seven tons per hectare at the moment. And uh, absolutely Africa is able to be on the same level as Europe, or maybe absolutely even more. I mean, the production capacity in Africa is higher than in Europe. So they would be able to produce more than seven tons.